Welcome to Jordan. If you're joining me for the first time, hi, I'm Caroline, and I've spent the last week in Jordan bobbing around in the Dead Sea, hiking Wadi Gwir to a lush green oasis. Marveled inside of Petra, whether it was seeing the treasury lit up during Petra by night, hiking up to the much quieter, but arguably more impressive monastery, or taking in the treasury from the view above. We adored our time exploring this ancient site. The last couple of days have been spent in the Wadi Rum Desert, being looked after by a guide who showed us all of the best places in the desert, led us on a hike with stunning viewpoints and drove us everywhere, including cooking us fresh hot lunches for us on open fires in the middle of the desert. Whilst we've adored our back to basics experience in Wadi Rum, we'll be spending just a small amount of time in today's video here as we head to a rather plush hotel to relax in at the Red Sea. Good morning and welcome to our final day here in Wadi Rum. It's really quite sad, but we are going to be leaving in just a little over an hour. We have absolutely adored our time here and the final meal that we're having is breakfast. So this morning I've gone with another one of these which is a little bit sweet so it's kind of like a dessert for breakfast and then I've gone with this is some kind of hot bean thing and I've put za'atar and some olive oil over the top I've got some cheese and yogurt I think that's feta cheese and the two of those mixed together is really nice with the flatbread last night we had some potatoes that had some kind of like I think saffron over it so I'm guessing that the leftover potatoes have been reused this morning for breakfast and they were delicious last night and I'm definitely one for not wasting food a couple of eggs some jam um, and I'll probably go back for a slice of bread to have with that jam um, and of course coffee but a little bit later on once we have had our 4x4 transfer back to the village where we left the car we are going to be heading to Aquaba. And we're leaving the camp now. We're heading back to the village, about maybe 10, 15 minute drive and I expect it's gonna be a bumpy one. <laughs> Final time exiting the 4x4 and this time onto tarmac instead of sand. <sighs> the journey from Wadi Rum to the Red Sea should have been an easy 90 minutes, though a matter of miles from our hotel, we did hit a roadblock and struggled to find an alternative route. Finally though, we made it to the hotel and for the second time on our trip, our last names not being the same seemed to throw the staff at the hotel. They erred on the side of caution and gave us a room with three beds to choose from and a dividing door. The place felt palatial. This trip to Jordan was planned incredibly last minute and we pretty much spent an entire weekend just putting together the flights, the itinerary and also the booking of all of the hotels and I said to Andy that I would like for him to sort out the accommodation for the Red Sea part of the trip because time was fast running away and of course as soon as you let Andy pick an accommodation we end up in this luxurious five-star resort hotel. What is with the helicopters this morning? <laughs> Red Sea, unlike a lot of the places that we tend to go to in Europe, which is a little bit of colder waters, more Mediterranean, going all the way up to things like the Baltic Sea, this is a lot more tropical and therefore it offers options to go either scuba diving or snorkeling. I've never tried scuba diving before, I'm not paddy 
certified or anything like that and then Andy unfortunately his lung collapsed a few years ago and the doctor said that he wouldn't be able to scuba dive without going through um, complex operations so naturally we are choosing to go snorkeling instead but a lot of the reefs are brilliant for snorkeling because they are so shallow there's a couple of different ways in which you can do the snorkeling around here. You can either drive to the different beaches that have got the different areas and then you can access them from shore. But my research and my reading tells me that actually there's an awful lot of dangers in the waters around this part of the Red Sea. And so instead we've opted to go with a boat tour. It's a four hour boat tour. It's costing us 35 JDs each, but that also includes lunch. Turns out that the noisy helicopters were in fact the Navy carrying out training exercises, which meant that until their session was over, no one was allowed out on the water. Thankfully our boat trip was only delayed by a couple of hours, so we spent this time relaxing at our hotel's private beach. Once the snorkelling trip began, the company were incredibly accommodating, with unlimited hot drinks, unlimited cold drinks, a freshly cooked barbecue that would be our lunch, and what was, in my eyes, a very fancy yacht to boot. To begin with, I enjoyed watching the kite surfers who were taking advantage of the high winds and doing some pretty impressive jumps. But before I knew it, an unexpected bout of seasickness had kicked in. Once we reached our first snorkeling spot, the staff were very good at ensuring the dropping of the anchor was safely away from any of the coral, and I was hopeful that getting into the water would help lessen the seasickness. Unfortunately, I still felt rough in the water and despite seeing some pretty coral, tropical fish and our guide pointing out a dangerous stonefish too, I was just too unwell to capture any of it and instead got rather nondescript footage. The second snorkel site gave us slightly better luck as we swam over a sunken military tank. Corals and sponges can be seen growing on it and it's attracted plenty of marine life thanks to the nooks and crannies that the tank offers them. Whilst far too unwell to have drawn such a conclusion at the time, I look back on this and chuckle over the irony of guns on a tank promoting life. How was it? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> That's my life. I could see the tank better than I could see the plane. Yes. Yeah. But I think our guide might have got some good footage of the plane when he free, free dived. Our guide had come up trumps, as we could only just make out the plane from the water's surface. But with his experience of free diving, he was able to get much closer. The plane was sunk in 2017 with a similar purpose to the tank, to provide a home for marine life, as well as a site of interest for snorkelling and scuba diving tourists. The rest of our time spent at the Red Sea was very leisurely, getting our money's worth out of the hotel that we'd paid for. We enjoyed time in the jacuzzis, the hotel's lazy river, water slide and countless pools. The breakfasts were excellent with so much choice ranging from decadent pastries and sweet muffins to traditional hot breakfast foods with an Islamic twist, chicken sausages and beef bacon. There was also more traditional Jordanian breakfast foods such as zatar, salads, hummus, yoghurt and a few bits and pieces I'm still not too sure what they were. The real showstopper however was the chef who would make breakfast pizzas fresh to order showcasing impressive pizza dough tossing skills.
and a sizzling hot pizza cooked fresh in a matter of minutes from the pizza oven. The cats and kittens provided us with plenty of entertainment while chowing down on our food. <laughs>